What's up, gangsters? Today, let's take a look at the second and already last non-English language movie, as we're in Mexico for Juecera, the Bone Woman. This movie was actually recommended quite a few times when I um, asked for suggestions for this series, and a movie that I was really curious about checking out myself regardless. So you know what? For once, let's waste no time and just uh, dive straight in and take a look at this movie. We follow Valeria, carpenter by trade, expectant mother by conformist familial and societal expectations. Yeah, what we're dealing with here is the latest entry in the pregnancy motherhood subgenre of horror, a branch I am admittedly not too well versed in. But hey, she seems happy, together with her partner Raul, and early on in the movie we mostly see them prepare for the birth of their child. Things start to feel a little off when they visit her parents on Mother's Day, and her family starts doubting her ability as a capable future mom. Things start to feel very off when she witnesses a person jumping off their balcony and then proceeds to do scary stuff. Valeria keeps witnessing this being with the people around her, of course not believing her, until she finally decides to take matters in her own hands to combat this evil spirit. Mm. I guess that's a way to summarize this movie, you know, like at face value. Which initially got me a little worried as I'm, I'm like, I kind of hate this whole, you know, like scary stuff keeps happening to the protagonist, but nobody around her believes her trope. And I was scared that it was going to pull like a, like a Baba do, you know, like where the, the scary stuff is like a representation or a metaphor for so-and-so pregnancy in, in this case, which is kind of what's happening here, to be honest. But then again, this movie goes about it in a pretty clever way, and it, it actually has something to say. Throughout the movie, we see Valeria crack her knuckles as a, a kind of a recurring theme, if you will, something she does when feeling anxious. At some point, I figured the significance of this had to do with this. When one se convierte in mamá, siente que se está partiendo en dos. Y espérate al parto. Literal. Sientes que se te parten los huesos. But after reading into the movie a little more, it turns out to be a bit more interesting. Yes, the title refers to a Mexican folklore, also known as La Loba, about this old woman who collects animal bones and sings them to life, only for them to eventually transform into a woman who runs free towards the horizon. Something like that? A story that seems to be popularized through Clarissa Pincola Estes' writing about it in her book Women Who Run With The Wolves, as basically all of my admittedly hasty and limited research and findings, refer to this one source. And don't get me wrong, I mean, like, I'm not here to explain all of that right now. But first of all, because, well, obviously I'm no expert whatsoever on the subject matter. But also, I feel like it's, it's not like necessarily like important right now. I'm just glad that it all makes sense. <laughs> This whole movie actually makes quite a lot of sense. Like all the little pieces, they just fit perfectly together. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Little by little, it becomes clear that Valeria's pregnancy, and well, her whole adult life in general, is not so much her own choice as it is just her conforming to the traditional familial and societal expectations of women. A problem that to this day in current Mexico, unfortunately, still is quite prevalent. But um, I'll get back to that later. We learn that she has an ex-girlfriend with whom she led a far less traditional life until she decided to go to college to make her parents proud. A former life more true to herself, which she seemingly longs for. The crazy shit, for a lack of better words, that we witness in this movie represents her growing anxiety caused by the pressure of motherhood that's been put upon her. And the movie does an amazing job at communicating all of this. It's beautifully filmed with certain shots that frame Valeria in a way imprisoned by the expectations of motherhood. The relatively subtle ways in which her family does so seem very natural, like, like very realistic. In general, Natalia Solion, is that right? As our protagonist is pretty amazing. I loved her performance, as well as her The Cure shirt. I wonder if she likes their lyrics. But it also works as just a rather good psychological horror movie. The paranoia, the scares, it feels very carefully crafted without being too obvious. 
Towards the end, we witness some more traditional rituals, which I, I, I love this stuff, and they make for some, some more visually stunning scenes. And without spoiling it, I absolutely loved the honesty of the ending. Yeah, it's, it's a great movie, honestly. And this was director Michel Garza Cervera's first feature-length movie as a director, which he also co-wrote, so props. I'll be keeping an eye out on you. It's totally understandable that this movie hits very differently for women, especially Mexican women. I have it on very good authority that, like I quickly brought up earlier, this movie especially hits home for them, as the, the themes of this movie, like the, like the context, it, it's all about the current situation of these younger women trying to move away from these more traditional ways of living, which is quite hard for this younger generation, especially for women from a more like lower income background. To quickly elaborate on that, Valeria's aunt, who not super coincidentally is the most likable member of her family, is the representation of the older generation, a lesbian woman that could never love freely because of this forced traditional ways of living. So yeah, absolutely recommended. While it doesn't necessarily do anything new, what it does, it does great. So for the ones out there that have already seen this one, do you agree? Like, like, what do you think? Believe it or not, but uh, I would love to hear your thoughts, which you can and should leave in the comments below. But until then, uh, um, I'll see you guys in a couple of days again for some more Horrors of 2023. Nice. Cheers. Have a nice day.